Hello and welcome to Lesson 1 in the Let's Program Hangman series. Let's Program Hangman is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial that is going to build a fully functioning game of Hangman using Python version 3.2.5 or any later version of Python. Now this series is going to assume that you've uh, that you're familiar with what we've covered in the Python tutorial series, uh, mainly using for loops, iteration, and that sort of stuff. So that will come up in these programs, and if you don't understand how they work, check those out in the Python tutorial series, because there'll be a more detailed explanation of what's going on in the programs there. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, lesson one, which is going to be introducing the split method and working on making a random word generator. Here we are in our Python programming environment. The first thing that we're going to want to do to start looking at how to build Hangman is find a way to make a word generator. And one of the methods that we're going to look at is the dot .split method. It's a, it's a method that we haven't looked at in any of the videos before. But this allows us to take a string in Python and convert it to a list variable with each space representing a new object inside the list or a, a new element inside the list. What that means is I can come over here and I can create a string variable and let's call this string variable words and I'm going to use some animals so I'm going to create the string of dog cat elephant giraffe and lion now when this program is executed as you would imagine that is a string variable so this is just one giant element what I want to do is I want to split this so that it's a list variable with multiple elements giving me instead five words. All I need to do to make that happen is put dot split as a method on the end. What that will do is it will take my string variable and split it into a list variable with multiple elements. If I execute this program now you can see that words is now a list variable and it has five individual elements, five string elements, each one representing an animal. What this is going to allow us to do in our Hangman game is create a program that is very easy to add new words to. So instead of creating a, a list variable and putting in the delimiters and putting in the brackets, I can simply have one string where I type words and have that turn into words from my random word generator. And actually, if we take a uh, step away for a moment from uh, creating a random word generator, there's actually a lot of uses for the dot split method. So let's, for example, let's say I was writing a function, and I'm going to call it get name. And the purpose of this function will have the user input their name. So um, let's put our comment in there and asks the user their name, then returns that name. And what we'll do is we'll have the user input their name, and that name will equal input. What is your name? We'll use our backslash n to create a new line. And then we'll simply return the user's name. Now that's a pretty simple function. Um, and when we execute this over here in our programming window, if we run get name, one of the things that happens uh, a lot of times, and we'll set this equal to a variable, so we'll say x equals gets name, is we'll ask the user for their name, and they'll type in something, say, like Jeff Johnson. And of course, x equals the string of Jeff Johnson, and we want our program to capitalize the name properly. And that's actually a pet peeve of mine is improper capitalization. So maybe I want my function to properly capitalize this person's name. But one of the things that, you know, the most common way, I guess, that, that students try and do this is they simply put dot capitalize as a function. And we've looked at that in the Python tutorial series, which will capitalize a string. The problem with simply using dot capitalize is that when I run uh, get name, so let's set x equal to get name, the user will type in the user, the, their name, Jeff Johnson. And x will equal Jeff Johnson, but we've only capitalized the j. What I really want is a function that asks the user their name, but then makes sure that both their first and last name is capitalized. I can accomplish this by combining the split method uh, with a for loop. 
So let's uh, write a new function here, and we'll call this uh, a long name. And this will ask the user their name, then return that name capitalized. And it's going to look just the same when we start. We'll simply set name equal to the input of what is your name. But we're not going to dot capitalize it. Instead, we're going to take their name and we're going to, I'm going to create a new variable here and I'll call it new name. And I'm going to have new name equal name dot split. Now I could probably, I could actually get the same functionality by simply typing dot split here. You don't have to do both. I would prefer in this method to hold on to the user's original name and then create a new name that's properly capitalized in case I want to remember or have my program remember what name the original, the user originally put in. So now I have this new name variable, which is the exact same as name. And if it's not properly capitalized, um, new name and name will both be kind of incorrect. Now I'm going to use the concept we talked about in for loops and I'm going to have an accumulator and we're going to iterate over this user's name and make sure that it's properly capitalized. To start that process I'm going to need an accumulator. So I'm going to have a, a new variable final name equal an empty string. Now, truthfully, this is a lot more variable than you would need in the function, and you could probably get away with much with fewer variables than I'm using here, but this kind of allows us to see what's happening in the program without changing variables as we go. So now I have this uh, final name accumulator, and I want to iterate over this user's new name. If the user entered, entered Jeff Johnson, we'd have name equaling the string Jeff Johnson, and new name would be a list with two elements, both Jeff and Johnson. Now final name is going to be an empty string, and this is where I'm going to do, uh, this is where I'm going to add my capitalization as I go through and correct the user's poor capitalization. Okay, so my Python shell just had a hiccup there, but uh, my program's okay, so let's build our for loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for i in new name. I'm going to iterate over each element of new name. If they entered Jeff Johnson, we'd have two iterations, one for Jeff and one for Johnson. Each time through, I want to take final name and I want to add to it, so plus equals I, the first time through Jeff, and I want to capitalize Jeff. The first time through, final name will equal, be equal to Jeff with a capital J. And if I left it at this and simply returned final name, so let's uh, return final name here, and test this function out, there, there will be a little bit of a problem with it. So let's execute long name and type in Jeff Johnson. And you can see what we're returning is Jeff Johnson, but there's no space like the user entered when they entered their name. So there's a couple ways to do this. I'm simply going to add a two final names, so final name plus equals, and then I'm going to have a space between two delimiters, and that will add a space after each iteration of um, after each iteration of this for loop. With that simple addition right there, I can run the long name function. Type in Jeff Johnson. And you can see I've got Jeff Johnson with spaces. Now the only bug this might potentially create in your program is you can see I have this trailing space. But of course I can simply add dot strip to the end of final name and that will remove any leading or tailing spaces. With that little change right there, we can run our long name. Oops. Let's see, long name here. Type in Jeff Johnson. And you can see it's properly capitalized and returning as a string. Now keep in mind this function will now work for names of any length. So if I ran a uh, long name with something like Joan of Arc, you can see we get capitalized of or we get capitalizations for every word that the user enters. But of course, this will also create uh, a little bit of a bug. So if I had a name like, um, and let's say the user enters it correctly, Justin McCarthy, 
um, but this third letter right here that C is capitalized, uh, this function would knock out capitalization in other letters too, so there's some bugs that you could work through, but in general the split method coupled with a for loop, while it can be a little bit, uh, you know, definitely it's got a lot more going on in this function than we do the simple get named function here at the top, this does allow us a little bit more control over what our users are entering and how to display that on the screen. But uh, back to our random word generator, let's go ahead and delete this example right here. And so we have uh, five possible words right here. Let's write a, uh, a quick program that will randomly return a word for us. Of course, if we're going to be randomly returning a word, we'll have to start by importing random. We have our word list, and that word list is split. So a simple way to do this would be to simply random.shuffle the words in word list. This will randomize the list or the order that these words appear in. So if we just simply ran this program right now and took a look at words, you can see we have dog, giraffe, cat, lion, elephant. And if we ran it again, those words are in a different order. So this random.shuffle will reorder our entire list, but because it's becoming a list before we shuffle it, we're getting a different list every single time. Then to get the word I want, I can simply, let's create a new variable, we'll call it random word, will be equal to words.pop. If you remember, pop will take whatever the last word in the list is and remove it from the list. So if we execute this again, and I take a look at words, whoops, if I take a look at words, you can see there's a missing element here, and that's because I've taken something out of this list and I've added it to the variable random word. So if I take a look at random word here, I can see that I got the word cat. If I run this program again, it should be different. So let's take a look at random word. And we got the word giraffe, and of course the word giraffe is missing from that list. You know, the, we may just want to make sure this is working uh, with a little bit of test code as well. So I'm pretty sure that it is, but we could do something like 4i in range, and we'll just put 5 in here uh, because we have 5 elements and we know it. Um, normally you wouldn't hard code this in here, you'd make it the length of words, but since we know we have 5 elements and this is just for tests, we'll do 4i in range 5. We will random.shuffle the list of words each time. Uh, theoretically, you would only have to do this once, but this makes sure that every time we run the for loop, the words are getting re-randomized. And then I'm simply going to say something like random word equals words dot pop. And then I'm going to print the random word. And this will run five times. When I run this program, we can see we got lion, giraffe, elephant, dog, and cat in that order. And every time I run this program, I'm getting the same words in a different order. Of course, if I wanted to add more words, all I'd have to do is come up here to the top and add some new words. So we could say automobile, diamond, telephone. So we've added three new words there. For our test code here, we just changed that to eight because we have eight words now and our list will have eight words, and each time we run it, they will appear in a different order. So that right there is how the dot split method works. Uh, hopefully you understand how that can work in your program. Uh, let's go ahead and throw a challenge program up so that you can practice the skill in a small program if you want to make sure that you understand what we talked about in this video. <laughs> So the challenge program for this lesson is relatively simple. What you're going to be doing is writing a program that has three different lists of words. Uh, the different words that the user can pick from are animals that live in water, animals that fly, and animals that live on land. Each category should have at least 10 words, and you're going to want to use the split function to make sure that each one of those is a list of words. Then write a short 
program that prompts the user to select a category and then it returns a random word from the category the user chose. So you can see I have it up here on the screen right now. So if I wanted an animal that flies, I can hit F and we've got a mosquito. If I ran the program again and selected F, I got a mosquito again. That was by a pure chance. Hit F again. Here you are in the Lesson 1 Challenge program. The Lesson 1 Challenge program is actually pretty simple. You are to write a program that initializes three different lists of words. Animals that live in water, animals that fly, and animals that live on land. Using the split function, you should make sure that each uh, category has at least 10 words to pick from. And then write a small program that lets the users pick the category that they want, and generates a random animal from the list that they have selected. So in this case right here, if I choose flying animals, you can see that the first word that got returned is crow. And if I ran this program again and selected F again, I'm going to get a different word. So I got a bird, and let's try one more F. I got a gnat, and I can try different categories as well. So my water animal, I got a shark. The second time through, I got a dolphin, and land animals, I got a frog. Each time the program runs, we're essentially practicing making a random word generator, only the user is going to control the category that the random word is picked from. And that's going to do it for lesson one in the Let's Program Hangman series. I know it was a longer video and we spent a lot of time on dot split, but if you understand how to make a random word generator, it of course is going to make Hangman a lot easier as we move forward. As always, if you have any questions about anything that we covered in this or any other video that you've seen on this channel, feel free to leave those questions in the comments and I will do my best to answer them as best I can. Until lesson two, thanks for watching and have a great day.